Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So over here, I have a Windows operating system running. And of course, once you have Android Studio installed and deployed in your Microsoft operating system, you can go ahead and launch it. So I have already installed the Android Studio. So Android Studio is, of course, powered by IntelliJ platform. It's used for you to develop your mobile application on top of Android, and you can do a lot of testing on it. And it's a wonderful way for you to test out, deploy, trial many of your application, test on the functions of it, and even be able to look at some of the APK packages and break it down and be able to look out for any interesting things about the APK file. So anyway, the first thing you want to look at is go into the top left corner, go under file, under settings, and in settings, you want to be able to ensure that you have Android SDK being installed inside your Android Studio. So once you have it here, like what we see, Android 6.0, Android 5.1, and of course, you can also install the rest of the Android, depending if you want to run it or not. So if you're running on some of the latest Android devices and you have the ability to test it out on your new APK installation, you can go and test that out. So moving forward, you also want to go into the tools of AVD Manager. So you can go under AVD Manager, which stands for Android Virtual Device Manager. And once you're in, you'll be able to see here that we can actually create virtual device. So over here, I already have one device. So it is running on x86. It has 3.9 gigabyte on its disk. And of course, we have the target of Android 10.0. And the resolution is what's the name. And of course, you go to the bottom left of the new dialog box or the new window. Click Create Virtual Device. And once you click on it, you'll be able to select the kind of platform you want. So you got TV, you got phone, you got Wear OS, tablet, and automotive. So of course, in today's case, in today's tutorial, we'll be looking at the phone, Android mobile device. So you can go ahead and select any of the Android devices that you want to test it out on. So of course, in this case, we can say, for example, Pixel Tree, and we can click on Next. So it will specify the size, the ratio, the density, and we can click Next on that. And now we have to select the kind of system image that we'll be using. So in this case, I have already downloaded Q, which is Android 10.0. And I also have Android 6.0 and Android 5.1. So in this case, I'll be using and selecting Android 10.0 to be running on our new operating system or our new device. So click next on that. And of course, you have to name the device. So of course, here we have the Pixel Tree XL and we got Android 10.0. It's going to run on portrait and of course the emulated performance i'll just go ahead and let it be running on automatic and once we're done on that you can also click on show advanced settings if you want to change some of the more advanced configuration which i think is can be explored in further tutorials so of course we got a ram of 1536 vm heap internal storage and so on so once we're done click finish and once we're finished we can go ahead and actually launch the new system so all you got to do is go into the right side and click launch this avd in the emulator click run on that and it would start up the android emulator for you so here you can see we got an android emulator running and of course we can actually be able to see the startup screen be able to see it running so here we can actually pull it over into the middle so here we can see it's powered by android is running the startup screen and we can see the device. If you're building your APK files, you're running some kind of test on Android mobile devices, you'll be able to use this emulator to actually help you test out your APK files. Or if you just want to run a mobile device on your Microsoft operating system, you can just launch it directly from Android Studio. So the great thing about this platform is that on the right side, you can actually click on more. And when you click on more, there's a lot of changes that you can actually specify so in this case for example you can specify the location so of course i can enter singapore and this would actually change the location of the device so when i click on it and this would actually be able to set the location for us so that's great because if you're testing out you are trying to surf the net from different places you can change the location directly from here and of course, we got a display setting. So of course, we can add secondary display. And of course, we can apply the changes and so on. And of course, we got cellular. So you can specify the network type, GSM, full LTE, and so on. So depending on what kind of connection you're trying to test, what kind of configuration you're trying to test, 
And of course, signal strength, of course, right now is being set to moderate. So if you look onto the screen, you can see that we got a half on the signal strength. So if I change it to great, then of course, when we click on to apply, it will actually change the signal strength inside the particular mobile device. And of course, we got battery and we can change the level of the battery as well, the charger connection. So a, a lot of capabilities for you to test out in terms of configuration of it. And of course, camera wise, we can also do the same. So of course, on my desktop, I don't have a web camera else. You will be able to apply it directly inside the system too. And in terms of phone, you can change the number coming from, you can call devices, you can send SMS. And what about the directional pad? So of course, this emulated device does not have for a directional pad, you can change that too. And microphone, we can also set it whether a headphone is being plugged into the Android device. And what about fingerprint? We can also do the changes on the sensor of the fingerprint. And of course, we got virtual sensors. So virtual sensors, you can actually be able to change the rotation of it. So here we can see the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and so on. So all these are changes that you can specify in the system. And ultimately, if you have any, if you uncover any problems with the system, you can absolutely send a notification over directly into the Android team and you'll take a look at it. And of course, when you're testing your system, you can also save the snapshots of the Android device. So if you're working right now, it's a fresh device, you want to save the information for it here. Before you make any plot changes, you can do and save those snapshots here. And of course, we got record and playback too. So we can start recording of the screen. If you're surfing the NAND, testing your APK file, you need to send the file or MP4 format over into different file locations. You can use it to save those settings to look at potentially what you're experimenting inside the Android device here. And here, of course, we got settings. So you can change the window team, enable the clipboard sharing so you can save text over on your Windows operating system and save it into your Android device as well. So again, a lot of other capabilities here. And there's a lot of shortcut keys that you can look at. And once we have all this information, we can go back into the Android device and we can launch, for example, Google Chrome. And we can actually accept and continue. And we can click no thanks for sign in first. So we can actually go into, say, for example, google.com to test out whether we have the internet connection coming in. So once you hit enter on that, we'll be able to access the web browser. And of course, there's a lot more things that we can explore further on in subsequent tutorials about how we can manipulate and make changes into the Android device, install APK files into it, do some kind of capabilities that could actually help us be able to do a lot more changes to the phone. So I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your queries. And remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.